I can say that this year was one of the best years I've had at the CLE for quite a while. This year, unlike the last couple of years, the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. Here's what we know. Canada is closing its borders because of the coronavirus pandemic. In cases of coronavirus that we know of around the world, at least 534,000 deaths as more than 6.1 million recover. The alarming rise in infections fueled by the Delta variant. Omicron is driving up cases around the world. Full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. That 16, also known as our it's been four years. A lot has happened since the last time we've been here. The world has changed, I have changed a lot, and you've probably changed too. Maybe that change was good or bad for your life, I don't know. But despite everything that has changed within these last four years, sometimes it is a good idea to go back to the good times and re-experience some old memories. Memories that made your childhood. That is exactly what we'll be doing today as I venture here for the first time in four years. Welcome to CLE 2023. We are back, baby. Just like with the last installments of this series, I will be showing you my experiences of going to the CLE this year and giving you a rundown on what to expect when you go to a place like this. I will show you a first-person perspective of each of the rides that I've gone on and give you a taste of the experience I had while on that ride. And for some of these rides, I might give you both a daytime perspective and a nighttime one. Without further ado, Let's go into the Sealy grounds and have some fun once again. When we made it to the fair, and after getting the all-important bracelet that allows us to go on as many rides as we wanted, we went for an initial walk around the fair. We came here a little early, so I wasn't too eager to go on any of the rides just yet. I just wanted to ease myself into the experience of being at this place once again, and to take it all in before I went too crazy. This gave me the opportunity to see what they had, where the rides were, where the food was, where all the carnival games are, along with a bunch of other stuff. Once we were done with our little walk around the fair and a little break, we were finally ready to go on some rides. For our first ride of the day, we went on the ferris wheel. Since we were still trying to ease ourselves into the experience, we didn't want to start on something that was a little too thrilling just yet. This is one of my go-to rides to start with because of this, and also because it's got some of the best views that the fair has to offer. From the top of the ferris wheel, I could get an incredible view of both the entirety of the CLE fair and many parts of Thunder Bay, including the Sleeping Giant, Mount McKay, and a lot of the surrounding areas. As long as you're not afraid of heights, this is a great ride to start with to ease yourself back into the thrilling experience of a place like this. For our second ride of the day, we decided to bump it up a notch and go on the bumper cars. This is one of my favorite rides to go on since you get to fully control your experience on the ride and do whatever you want. I wasn't in the driver's seat this time around, so I was just along for the ride. But that didn't stop me from getting some great clips on the ride. Just like the last video, I will be counting the number of collisions we've gotten of each type and totaling them all up at the end. So without further ado, let's go bump some cars. Head on, 
And that's what we ended up with. My dad was ruthless this time around, especially when it came to those head-on collisions. And well, that concludes our experience on the bumper cars. Before I go on to the next ride, I think it's time for a slide intermission. Let's ride down the super slide. It's actually been a very long time since I've been on a slide, so I was actually kind of surprised on how thrilling it was, to be honest. But I got some enjoyment out of it. Anyways, time for the next ride. For our third ride of the day, we decided to go on another old favorite of mine, the Tilt-A-Whirl. It's one of those rides where all the seats spin around in a circle, and where all of the seats can spin around themselves. Those seats can spin surprisingly fast at times, which is why this ride can be quite a fun experience. This is also one of the few rides that I went on both during the day and during the night. For our nighttime session of this ride, we just happened to luck out and our seat just kept on spinning and spinning basically the whole time. Perhaps it made it for our daytime session where our seat just wasn't spinning at all for the entirety of the last half of the ride. But hey, that was fun. Before we went for a quick little break, I decided to take another intermission and traverse through the funhouse, just to see if I can make it for a kid's place as an adult. The next ride I wanted to try was a new ride that I have never seen before, the Wind Glider. From the outside, this ride seemed to work very similarly to the Paratrooper that I went on the last time I went to the CLE. I remember that ride being quite thrilling when I went on it, so I was half expecting this ride to be the same, so I was really nervous. But I was genuinely interested in trying this out, so I did. The really interesting part of the Wind Glider is the way that you ride it. Instead of sitting down like on a lot of the other rides, you actually lay down in your stomach, just like you would on a real hang glider. I was kind of worried on how the safety harnesses worked on this ride, but thankfully, they were really good and locked me in. When the ride started, oh boy, I was not ready for the experience that I would have while I was on here. For the two minutes that I was on that ride, I actually felt like a superhero that I was flying around. I held my fist out and I took to the skies. That has got to be one of the best experiences that I have had in a very long time. That literally felt like a dream come true for me. I genuinely felt like I was flying around for those two minutes, and I probably had the biggest grin on my face while I was on that ride. In fact, I enjoyed this ride so much, I actually went on it again. I didn't do the superhero pose this time around, but it was still a genuinely fun experience for me even while riding it a second time. And well, that was the wing glider. If you get the chance to go on a ride like this, I would highly recommend you do. Gosh, that thing was amazing, let me tell you. All right, next ride. Have you ever wondered what it would look like to be abducted by aliens or to just ride in an interstellar spaceship? 
Well, look no further than a Starship Invaders ride. When I went on the ride, it looked like something I have never really seen before. There's no safety harnesses anywhere, just a bunch of plates on the walls that everybody stands in front of and that you can lean your body against. To be frank, I was a bit nervous about this one as well. I saw it spin pretty fast while I was waiting in line for this ride, so I was prepared to be pretty thrilled of this one. After not too long, the ride started spinning. Due to the enclosed nature of the ride, you won't see the outside at all, so you won't feel like you're spinning. Even so, I wouldn't recommend moving your head because if you do, you will immediately feel dizzy. Don't do that. After not too long, my body started to glue itself to the wall. I almost felt like somebody flipped the sideways gravity switch. The force pushing me towards the walls got stronger, eventually to the point where I could take my feet off the ground and see on the wall. Almost like it had been removed from the influence of gravity. It's such a surreal feeling. Eventually, the plates on the wall started to levitate upwards, bringing everybody up with it. Yep, see you later, gravity. We're completely off the ground now. The ride went on like this for around four minutes. I tried a few things while I was on there. I tried to extend my arm out, and I could barely do that. I tried moving my phone around, and that was also really difficult. In fact, my arms got pretty darn tired trying to record this ride because of how hard it was to keep my arms out. Eventually, the force pushing us towards the walls weakened. The plates fell back to the floor, I rested my feet back on the floor, and then back in the influence of gravity. We finally landed. And well, that was my experience on the Starship Invaders ride. It was definitely one of the most surreal rides that I've been on in a long time, albeit a very thrilling one at that. That last ride made my head really dizzy riding it, so I decided to stop here for now and take a break. We took another walk around the fair to ease out on the frill a little bit and grab something to eat. I wasn't terribly hungry to begin with, so I decided that a corn dog was good enough for me. We decided to walk back to our vehicle to take a drink and to chill out there for the next 10 to 15 minutes. By the time we were done with our break, it was already starting to get dark outside, and our time was starting to run out. The fair was also starting to get incredibly busy, and the lines were getting really long. So we wouldn't be able to go on too many more rides before we had to leave. So we got going. Before we went on to the last ride of the night, it is time for yet another slide intermission. Nighttime edition. It surely is surprising how much I missed going down these slides as a kid. Okay, for our final ride of the night, I decided to go onto the ferris wheel one more time to get a beautiful overhead view of the fair and its shining lights at night. This is probably my most favorite part of the entire experience at this fair, because this is the moment where I can just sit back, relax, ease out on the free that I've just had, and contemplate the last few hours of my adventures at this fair, while at the same time, looking down on the fair's shining glory. That was incredible. All I can say is that when you go to a fair like this, you gotta go on the ferris wheel at night. It's literally a part of the prophecy for an adventure like this because of how incredible of an experience it can be. Oh, and to top things off, since we came here on the last day of the fair, I got to see the fireworks show that this fair had up close and personal. I gotta tell you, it was absolutely incredible. Gosh, if this whole adventure couldn't have gotten any better. Once the fireworks show was done, it was time. It was that time of the night for us to get back into our vehicle and head home.
During my time with the CLE this year, I went through some of the most surreal feelings that I have gone through in a very long time. I have probably been to this place over a dozen times at this point, but this time, coming back to this place as an adult, I just felt a feeling of nostalgia that I have never felt before. Something that I can't really fully describe. There was a part of me that was uncovered that day. A part of me that hasn't resonated in me for a very long time. I realized how much I actually missed this place. The sheer joy that it brought me. The freedom that it gave me. The bravery and confidence that it gave me. The independence that it gave me. And the ability for me to try something new and get out of my comfort zone. I started to realize how much this place actually shaped me as the person I am today. Those feelings came rushing down during the middle of that night. I realized that I have never felt this much joy, or felt like I had this much fun in a long time. I thought of my experiences of going on the wind clatter this year as wish fulfillment to me. I felt like I just did the stuff of my dreams while I was on that ride, to fly around and to be free, and that my dreams were brought into reality. When I was a kid, I used to be really excited to go to the CLE. Every year, almost every night in the months leading up to the event, I would stay up for hours on end watching Curtis VM's CLE videos and fantasizing about my experiences being there. There was one year that I remember where I cried because my parents didn't want to take me there that year and ultimately gave in and took me there. It was not until that night after my CLE journey this year that I once again understood all of those feelings of excitement that I had while I was a kid. Those two videos were also what inspired me to make this series as a whole, and perhaps if it weren't for those two videos, this series might have not happened in the first place. I can't really put into words how much those two videos meant to me all the way back then. This is starting to get too emotional for me. I need a moment. And well, that concludes my adventure to the CLE Grounds in 2023. Perhaps the main takeaway of my adventure that day is that sometimes, despite all of the change I have gone through, it is a good idea to just take a step back and appreciate the places that were a part of your childhood and re-experience the joy and happiness that they once brought you. Perhaps, those experiences might help you grow as a person, to find yourself, or at the very least, you'll appreciate the fun that you have gotten out of the experience. You should always remember that despite everything that has changed about your life, you will still always be yourself, no matter what. I am Red, and thank you for watching.